What's up guys, welcome back. So, JB's Red Highland is finally back for these bespoke coilovers that he finally received after probably waiting about three or so months. We uh, shared a video with you guys about two months ago on this vehicle. You know, uh, our client had to kind of wait for some time to get these coilovers. And the reason he chose these coilovers, uh, a brand that I'm not familiar with at all, is because he was able to get them custom valved uh, for specific spring rates that he really wanted um, right out of the box. I don't even know actually how much these ended up costing him. I'll probably ask him those questions afterwards. But he finally received them. Um, if you don't recall this vehicle here, uh, he just wanted to get more competitive. He was ripping through tires because he didn't have any alignment mods done on the vehicle. So what we did a couple months ago, and I'll share that video with you guys up here, uh, we did his brake upgrade. So lines, pads, two-piece rotors, um, brake fluid. We did his mountain pass front upper control arms, his rear camera arm and rear toe arm, I believe. Um, I think that was what we did. It was kind of like the stage one, um, you know, upgrade to get him through uh, so he can just start racing. Well, ironically enough, uh, solo Nats is happening like right now. Um, so I don't think, you know, he was ever planning on going to, to Nats anyways, uh, but he did receive his coilovers just the other day. So I spent about an hour yesterday because I don't have experience with these uh, going through taking measurements and getting these things preset i uh, going to cross my fingers and get them on the car to figure out exactly where the ride heights are because uh, we're just in uncharted area right now, uncharted territory. So, you know, one of the things I wanted to share with you is these are 28-way single adjustable coilovers, custom valve for these specific spring rates that he's running. He's got our weight jacks in the rear with these springs as well, uh, some swift springs. And then we've also got, of course, the, you know, most amazing active damper simulators, suspension cancelers that you can get on the market. These beautiful, beautiful mountain pass performance, CNC, billet housing, potted in epoxy, just like an OEM product. You get what you pay for. These are not cheap, but they are amazing. They've never failed on us. And again, we've got our own little brackets here as well. So we're gonna go ahead and install these brackets, mount them into these brackets so they're nice and secure. We obviously will need some rib nuts. We will be getting all of that stuff installed, uh, get all this stuff set up. Now, the one thing that I did want to tell you, the one other thing I wanted to tell you about is the complexity of a coilover, things that you need to think about on a coilover that's designed like this. And this is very um, common with products like uh, that are made overseas in, in Asia. So uh, even Olin's, for example, manufactured by Yamaha in Japan, they use an independent shock body and, and lower mount. So for example, you'll have an independent lower bracket from the actual shock body itself. So you can adjust the overall length of this shock assembly versus a product like Oh gosh, like probably Moton, AST, KW, you know, which is like Mountain Pass, um, JRZs, all of those, a lot of the European companies will actually have these, these shock bodies at a fixed length. So it eliminates a lot of potential user error. They've already done all the calculations. It's more expensive to do that because those bodies are designed really for one specific vehicle. And then these brackets are actually welded in part of that assembly. So just think about that from a manufacturing standpoint, they won't have as many universal components, so to speak. Uh, so they can't you know, ship these brackets separate from the shock bodies themselves. They have to come as a complete assembly. Uh, what that does do though, is it allows you to be able to just adjust height. You don't have to worry about all these additional calculations. In this situation where you have an independent bracket and shock body, you need to make sure you understand suspension uh, dynamics and you want to make sure that you know exactly what the overall free length of this, this extended damper should be, as well as its compressed height, which is really, really important and really critical because if you make this shock body too short and when this, when this actual shock itself compresses, you can run into a couple of problems. One is you can have the wheel itself 
going too far up into the fender liner, you can have issues with contact in various places. So on the front end, you just want to make sure that you don't have issues with the sway bar, the tie rods. Um, you don't want the tire to be going up into the fender too far scrubbing. You don't want the bottom of the chassis to be slamming onto the pavement. Um, you know, you can have issues in the rear, for example. So if you make the rear shock body too short, then uh, you might have more stroke in the shock than you have, let's say, distance, you know, from or clearance from the bottom of the vehicle to the actual concrete or pavement uh, or curbs or whatever it may be. You just got to be really, really careful. So you need to understand exactly what those calculations are, those measurements are. The factory, the OEM dampers, they've already done all of that. Um, so a lot of companies will just mimic the overall compressed length of the factory dampers. That's kind of a safe way to do it. There might be a little bit of wiggle room. You might be able to go like a half inch shorter, five eighths of an inch, something of that sort. So typically what you'd want to do is you would actually take this shock assembly. If you have a actual true coilover where the spring sits on top of the damper itself, you would actually remove the spring completely have the upper mount on here, install that chuck assembly in there. Obviously do not connect your sway bars and you will jack up the vehicle. There's a ton of videos uh, on YouTube uh, from, from various companies that discuss actually how you should really set up a coilover that's designed like this. We have independent, you know, um, shock body from the bracket so you can adjust the overall length of the shock. But you install this thing without a spring, you put it in there, you compress the shock, you, you obviously have the wheel and tire assembly on there, and you see exactly what the clearances are with that tire all around. You know, inside the fender, you check for clearances, sway bars, tie rods, all that good stuff. Uh, make sure that there's no clearance issues. If there are, then you have to adjust the shock length itself so that you don't have any of those issues. Then you go ahead and you install the spring, and if you're running really high spring rates, you'll need to install the helper spring. All right, so that way you can control the actual droop and height of the vehicle. If you don't have a helper spring, then a lot of times what will happen is to get to your desired ride height, this spring is just gonna be flopping around. The main spring's gonna be flopping around. It'll have no preload. It won't be able to maintain its position. In the event that you do go into a droop situation, this spring might flop out of place. Uh, it might even score the uh, piston shaft itself and it might not find its place you know, it, it might not settle back into its right position. So these helper springs are there for a lot of various reasons. Um, but in any case, we've already worked on so many different suspension systems. I have a pretty good idea of what those compressed lengths should be as well as the free length of the shock. So I've preset those up. I didn't need to go through all of that additional work, but if it's a new application that you're not familiar with, then you'll want to go through that process. And then the same thing goes for the rear. Fortunately enough, you know, with the Tesla, it's a divorce spring setup. The shocks and the springs are separate on the vehicle. So you um, can essentially just install the shock in there, uh, leave the spring out, disconnect the sway bar end link from, you know, wherever it is attached on the vehicle, compress the rear, and then set this overall length here as well. Uh, so, you know, like I said, I've already done that. I've already kind of pre-installed some upper mounts on here. This thing is ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and get these things on the car. We're gonna cross our fingers. We're gonna get this thing set on the ground, see where the ride height is. I don't know exactly what his you know, uh, bump to droop travel and ratios are gonna end up being. Uh, he'll kind of discover that as he goes. There's only so much that I can do when I'm not the one kind of designing and setting up these shocks. We're gonna also corner balance the vehicle today and then we're gonna install these ADS simulators uh, from Mountain Pass cross our fingers and have them send it. So let's go guys.
All right, so we got the height set. Luckily, my calculations came out really good and we are very close to where we want to be. We're gonna go ahead and do a preliminary alignment on it to get his camber and tow values in a close proximity. We're gonna have him get in the vehicle as well. And then we'll go ahead and get this thing on scales and we'll start dialing in the ride height and then we'll go back in and do another button up alignment on it. So ready, let's go. What's up guys, this one's all done. Another one for the books for EVX, JB. We wish you the best on your adventures with this vehicle and this new suspension that you've just gotten. Please do report back to us, let us know how it goes. We will always stay in touch with you and keep an eye on how things are going. But just to recap what we've got on this car. So let's start with all the uh, alignment bits that he started out with first. So he's got the mountain pass front upper control arm, mountain pass for camera arm, mountain pass toe arm. He's got the lower control arm bearings. He's got our polyurethane caster uh, bushing in the compliance arm. So I believe we have set that to, he probably gets another half degree of caster out of that thing uh, that we've given him. Uh, we've also got the mountain pass active damper simulators on here. He's got his own custom coilovers. Uh, what else did we do? Well, he's got sway bars on it front and back. Um, braking, he's got, uh, I believe we've done multiple brake fluid on it. I forget what brake pads he got, but he supplied some brake pads to us, two-piece rotors. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. Um, and then, um, you know, probably has a brake master cylinder brace, which he'll use when he can, uh, depending on class regulations. Uh, but uh, that's it, guys. As you could see in the video, how easy it was to corner balance this vehicle with the weight jackers, the articulating weight jackers. That is a freaking godsend. Those things are amazing. Uh, we've got his ride height set up with his driver weight. We aligned it with him in the vehicle, obviously, corner balance, everything. So this car is done and dialed and we'll report back to you. I'm sure next time we get out there to the event, we'll put a camera on it. We'll get some uh, on-car footage of it and we'll share that with you guys. But again, thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. We'll put links in the description below of all the amazing Mountain Pass performance parts that we've supplied on this vehicle. Don't forget, he's got the Aspira Forge AF10s, 1910 and a half. He's running the British on RE71 RSs in a 275, 35, 19. Let's get it, JB. Go win some challenges, go win some races, and rep us good. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one.